Shalom Rastafari, Shabbat Shalom, Sendet Salam, Salam Tanat, Eina Yist Erling, Ene Rasia Dino Safari Neng. Now we will get right into this this 37th uh, Shabbatical portion known as um, Shalach uh, Lika in the Hebrew, but Ibrahist. And in the Royal Amharic, if you consult with the Sabbath house reading chart for number 37, Bamarinya is called Lak Tilkalachu. Lak Tilakachu. Now the Hebrew, Shalak, Shalak Lika. Let us touch on this right here. Let us get this up here. So we're in the 37th, our RSS, right? RSS, uh, Rastafari Sabbatical Study, number 37. Now I want you to make a note of that. This is what we're going to touch on. We're going to touch on the number 37, the number 37, and, and prophecy, and, and the revelation of Rastafari prophecy, and the prophecy of we as Ethiopian Hebrews that's linked with and it's contained in that number 37. Now, this 37th portion, you understand, which is speaking about the main element of this Parsha, it tells the story from the book of Numbers of the scouts or the spies that were sent out to spy out the promised land. Now, there's a very important lesson. His Majesty reminds us that the scriptures was written as an admonition to I and I. You understand the admonition to I and I. And it's very interesting what His Imperial Majesty says, and we publish this within the majority of our um, publications, especially concerning the translation, the Revised and Hard Bible. His Majesty says this right here, all the ancient scriptures were written for our instruction in order that through the encouragement, could it give us an input of courage, faith, courage and a just cause so the, the the key there is the faith and we're going to learn that because the beta israel they did not have faith or because of unbelief which is an evil heart to the word of jah they wandered around the wilderness for 40 years as a generation wandered around the wilderness of the americas and the caribbean for 40 years and still, Shashimani, still the land grant, the promised land is still the issue for I and I as a diaspora. But His Majesty instructs us that all the ancient scriptures are written for our instruction in order that through the encouragement they give us, we may maintain our hope. So hope, test for expectation is important with fortitude. So we're not just maintaining a hope but we're maintaining the hope and the expectation with fortitude. That means we're fortified. You understand that, yes, attacks may come, but if your house is a fort, you're able to withstand that. You understand? So understand the faith and the, the working of faith and the scripture and the word, you understand, with maintaining that faith, with having the courage and prevailing in the justness or the righteousness of the cause. Now, righteousness, we have to also teach on righteousness, too, because there's, some, there's many misconceptions of what is meant. They once read the word righteousness, but must read these words in the scriptures in their proper um, messianic or, or Christological overstanding. Because if you read it from a a Iscariot mind, or like the so-called Old Testament Jewish mind, and with a veil over your eyes, you have the foundation like the Pharisees did, and like many of these ones and ones do within the Jewish um, Judaic um, teachings. But the denying of Christ, it, the Moshiach, it robs them of so much. And many of the Jews, European Jews and, and even black Jews and others, once they recognize truly the Moshiach, then their Judaism becomes glorious. You understand? In the light of the King of Kings and his Christ. But it says, because we desire that the light, the illumination, which comes from the scripture, may shine to all. So if there is an illumination that actually comes from the scripture. You understand? So as we study the word, as we meditate on the word, as we fellowship 
in the word and even take that word personally. That's where it has to begin. There's an individual responsibility about this. But he says, because we desire the light, the illumination which comes from the scriptures, the metaph kedus, may shine to all. This Bible, speaking of the book of the seven seals, the metaph kedus, speaking of this particular Bible, right, those seven seals right there, see the seven seals right there, this Bible, right, his majesty says, what about this Bible? He says, this Bible, by our command and will, has been revised and printed in the 31st year of our reign. Now, this particular speech was July 23rd, 1961. So, thus, we have the, the, the original um, foreword for this particular Bible, His Majesty's particular Bible. But, yes, he's speaking about the Revised and Hard Bible, but in principle, he's speaking of the Bible. So, even if one doesn't know so-called Amharic, or has not remembered their, their pure language as of yet, prayer, practice, will bring about perfection. We still have to study in the language that we know. And therefore, the Schofield Reference Bible, as we often recommend and remind, is an excellent groundational and foundational study, especially for you all, my brothers and sisters, as Deca uh, Mezamorit, as disciples. All right, so that's a word right there that we want to point out. Now, this particular um, uh, shalak lika, shalak lika, right, in the Hebrew. So how should we write this? Should we, let's, let's write this in the sh, right, la, right, we can put kh there, and then we have l, right, and ka. Shalak Laka. Now, Bamarinya, we have Lak, right? Dot, dot, dot. Til, right? Ka, La, Chi, Hu. Well, let me make that so long. Til, Ka, La, Chi, Hu. Now, even the sound, if you listen to the sound, Lak, you hear this Lak. Ka, Lak, Shalak, Laka means to send. You understand? To send. Now, in the Hebraic, it is defined as um, send or send to you. Now, when we go to the scripture, this particular portion is Numbers chapter 13. Yes, that number, chapter 13. Right? So, let's go to Numbers chapter 13. So, let's turn our Bibles to Numbers chapter 13. Let's have our pen and our papers. Let's take some notes. Okay, so the first thing is the name the name of this particular Torah portion. But we want to focus on this, this number. You understand? This number. Because we're in the book of Numbers. Now there is a biblical and scriptural meaning of numbers. Now here's where this revelation comes in. Because we as Rastafari, we as Ethiopian Hebrews, in connection with Ethiopia, His Majesty, the land, Ethiopian World Federation, all the elements Biblical, scriptural, and prophetic are there. You know what I'm saying? None of us have made up these elements. We all know by study and by the historical data that these are facts. So we gotta we gotta consider the facts and we have to do the math now. Right? So let's just talk about some of the basic facts right here. The basic fact is that this is the thirty seventh weekly Torah portion, known as the Parsha in the Hebrew, the weekly Torah portion, in the annual Jewish or Judaic cycle of Torah reading, what we call the Orit, Minbab, or Nibab. Now, this is the fourth in the book of Numbers. So, so far, we've had three previous readings in the book of Numbers. And if you recall some of the videos that we've posted between the sabbatical um, readings and feedings, we kind of had to go over this territory. The inspiration was there. The Holy Spirit guided us to go over this territory again. And even though we have read this, these are portioned out in weekly sabbatical portion and the weekly meditation, you know what I'm saying, within, within the cycle of our, of our year, of our Ju Judaic way of life, you know what I'm saying, line of the tribe of Judah, Judaic 
Hebrew, Ethiopian, Israel, Amos 9 and 7, all those elements right there just make it clear. Now that we see the connection in order now to walk and operate in it, we have to study, you understand, know and show ourselves approved to Jah as a workman that need not be ashamed. So when we say we're about Jah's work, truly we are about his work, right, with faith, courage, and a just cause. So he says that the scriptures gives us the what? Encouragement. You know what I'm saying? The scriptures give us the encouragement, but the root and the groundation of it is faith. You know what I'm saying? What they call belief. Remember the three candles? The first candle is belief. The second candle is faith. And the third candle is fruition. The, the, the first candle is like the outer court. The second candle is the first room or the most holy. And the third candle is the holy of holies. But in a practical way, the first candle is when you've heard something. So you, you believe you heard this and you believe what you heard. That means you accept it basically as being true, but you don't know about it. You really don't know if it's true, but it sounds true and nothing overtly um, disproves it. But now you go to the next level. You know, so you've heard this, but you need to read it and study it and find the truth for yourself. And that is the second candle. You know what I'm saying? The second candle, or you could say the second leg of it. You know when they talk about giving somebody the third degree? On a certain level, that's the same three candles. Now, the three, the trinity, the shalase, the salase, is also embedded within that particular idea, that one, two, three. So first level is that basic level of belief. Biblically speaking, it's like the disciples, they had faith, but now when we study, we find out that they had many times they were weak in faith, or Christ, the Moshiach, would say, O oh, ye of little faith, right, of little faith. So we learn that faith could be little, and in other cases, faith was great. You know what I'm saying? So we have to ask ourselves, well, what is faith in the operative level? You understand? I mean, when we are all alone by ourselves and we consider these things, do we really know what we are talking about? You understand? And, and that's why we keep going to the personal level, the individual I. You understand? The individual I. So that one's study, one's growth, one's progress is, is, is really in an orderly way. And one's, the fruitfulness, let's deal with that for a moment. Because the third candle is fruition, but the second candle, right? The second candle is a scholar level. The second candle is called faith. So we go from just a, a level of belief or belief in that level is what we call blind faith. The first candle is belief in blind faith. Like I heard about Rastafari, I heard about Ethiopia. I don't really know so much. It sounds, it sounds good. It sounds nice and everything. If it's true, but yeah. I really don't know because I can't really move on that. But if one is so inclined to make their wills obedient, they're going to check it out. You know what I'm saying? Especially if it touches you know what I'm saying, um, their heart. You know what I mean? If something really touches you, or you know like when you get that vibe, like I got to know more about this. I got to check this out for myself. I think there's, it's, it's like your soul sees there's a blessing there. You know what I'm saying? There is some goodness there. There's something there for you. So you go beyond that blind faith, to, uh, to the, which is belief, to the level of seeing faith, which is the scholar level, is the level of study, is the level of reading. You understand? Know it's a level of show and prove. You understand? Know show and tell. You understand? Know Learn it for yourself. Get get a grasp of the issue. You understand? Know Not that I can speak it. You understand? Know but that you can speak it. You can preach it. You can stand up on it. You can move in it, and the 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 works follow. The fruitfulness follows. So you know the truth for yourself. And His Majesty said that that's one of the main reasons why he published the Metzhaf Kedus, the Bible, in a language in which the young and the old understood. So that by reading it, they might find the truth for themselves. You know what I'm saying? Find the truth. For, not saying what truth you should find for yourself. There's, there's some basic principles you have to come to understand. You know what I'm saying? Concerning God the Father and His Son, the Bain Ha Elohim, Yeshua Ha Moshiach, our Black Lord and Savior. That's just that's like the prerequisites. You know, what I'm saying that you cannot get to the Father, the True God, unless it is 
in and through the Son, the faith of the Son, the righteousness of the Son. You know what I'm saying? That means now we, we're once again in the family of God. So we call upon his Father. We can call upon him as our Father. That's the prayer. Abu Nazab Samayat. O our Father who art in heaven. Now, Shalak here is interesting because it begins from Numbers chapter 13, verse 1, to Numbers 15 and 41. Now, a little bit earlier when we was touching on the fringes, and we had showed um, some of the examples of the fringes. We even had touched on this right here, which was uh, um, from the Bible or from the Tanakh, the Holy Scriptures that came along with these particular um, fringes right here, as you can see, these fringes right here, right? Now, that's also contained in this particular, in this particular Torah portion, um, uh, the last part, the last one, two, three, four, five verses of this Torah portion is touching on the the fringes, the the zeros or the zitzis or the zitzis, zitzis or zitzis in the Hebrew. But the main part of this Torah portion was interesting because it's generally read among the diaspora in in June. And the name comes from the first distinctive words in this particular Torah portion, which is in Numbers chapter 13, verse 2. So as a short name, is called Shalach, Shalach, right? Not Shalach, but Shalach. And it is the sixth, and Leka, Leka is the seventh word of the portion of the Parsha. Now this Parsha here, it tells the story of the scouts or the spies, the 12 spies. And now we find out 10 of them discouraged the Beta Israel. 10 of them told, and we're going to go through the, exactly what they told. They, they gave basically a false report. This is similar to where we hear false reports of Ethiopia, of Africa, of the Promised Land. We hear a lot of false reports. Oh, you're not African. They don't accept you as African. So a lot of the false reports from our faith-based perspective, you know, and from the true perspective that we should have as sons and daughters, which means in faith. Because once we're in faith, we have the courage, and we study the scriptures, we get encouragement, and therefore we prevail in the justness or the righteousness of the cause. Because the battle is not I and I's, the battle is the Lord's. The battle is Yahweh's, it's Jah, if you please. So let's touch on this portion which tells of the, um, the, 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 the spies and the ten spies who brought forth false witnesses, but the two who brought forth true witnesses. Um, there's a commandment about the offerings and the story of the Sabbath violator. And then there's the commandment of the fringes, which we just briefly touched on. But here, let's get into the number 37. Now, why is, why is the number 37? Why are we saying the number 37 is important? I mean, should we start out, first of all, with the Ethiopian World Federation? Should we start here in a prophetic sense? You understand, with the Ethiopian World Federation? Should we start with this particular document? You see what date it is right there? You understand? You see what date it is right there? Right? What date it is? August 25th, 1937. You see the 3 7 again? Is that 3 7? Now, let's just once again, our brother, Dr. Malako um, Bayan, you know what I'm saying? It's this brother's picture, I trade, that should be up. If anybody wants pictures next to His Majesty, it should not be Marcus Garvey. It should be this particular brother right here, Dr. Malaku Emanuel Bayan. All right? If you don't know who he is, get to know who he is. You know what I'm saying? If you say you are a child, a son or daughter of His Imperial Majesty, you've got to recognize that it's one who he has sent. You know what I'm saying? One who he has sent to us. And it's through this particular this particular, not even organization, but covenant. This, this covenant goes beyond just its so-called incorporation in New York when you understand our divine heritage. You know, in the Ethiopian World Federation. So should we begin off, should we begin off here, 1937? You understand? 
what else can we touch on with 37? We can touch on, we just touched on the skull and, skull and bones, the valley of the dry bones, what's going on with the hip-hop black generation. You recall this particular book right here? Let's see if we get some light on this. You remember this book right here? The Valley of the Dry Bones, the conditions that face black people in the Americas. Wonder why everybody's wearing the skull and bones like they're into rock and roll music. Are they into rock and roll music or is there some deeper sorcery, witchcraft, or curse that's going on right here? But Valley of the Dry Bones, we touched on this before, right? But this is really, this is Ezekiel. If you go to the Bible, Ezekiel chapter 37, there's that number again. Have you read Psalm 37? Have you read Psalm 37? There's that number again. So let's put some of this down. Let's take some notes of this. So we touched on the 37th Psalm, and let's deal with verse 1 and verse 2 from chapter 13. This is at a place called the Kadesh Barnea, or the Kadesh Barnea. And it speaks of the spies, the spies or the scouts that were sent in, right? And here it says, and the Lord, or and Yahweh, and Jah, Jehovah, but for Jah, spake to Moses, saying, Send thou men, send you men, that they may search the land of the Canaanu. They will search the land of Canaan, which I gave to the children of Israel, of every tribe of their fathers, shall ye send a man, every one a ruler, every one a ruler among them. So they were to send, each tribe was to send a particular, um, uh, like a delegate. Each tribe was to send a particular representative, you understand, know, of their particular tribe, and each one had to be a head, it, it, like say a ras. Uh -huh. Because it's everyone a ruler amongst them. Everyone a ruler amongst them. So not just any ordinary person. So we see that there is a very clear, even here among the Beta Israel, among the Israelites here in the wilderness, and we know they've been having their problems. If you've been paying attention with these Torah portions, you will really begin to see the the um the autopsy. It's like the autopsy of the lost sheep. Is the Bible is the autopsy of black people, basically. You know what is right about them, but moreover, what is what is killing them, what is destroying them, and their ignorance of these things. Uh huh. And the false gospel. You know the, these false prosperity gospels that only gives them not even the half of the story. Before, one time they were getting half the story. Now they, they, they might be getting a sixteenth, an eighth, more like a sixteenth of the story. So we want to find out why did the, the Israelites lose the promised land? Why did a whole generation of Rastafari also, in a sense, lose the promised land. How did they lose out on the promised land? That's why we began off with 1937, this little small book right here, the Ethiopian World Federation Incorporated, because that's a key link with Shashimani, and with that land grant and even other land grants to come for the right people. You see, when Josh said, when his man said, next time send the right people. So first let's deal with 1937. Right, 1937, and the EWF, right, and that's for Ethiopian World Federation, right, the Ethiopian World Federation. Now, what's connected with the Ethiopian World Federation, right, is the land grant, right, the land grant, really the land grants, but there was one land grant we were given, and that's the Shah Shah. Shashamane, right? This is the Shashamane land grant, right? 1937 wasn't given in 1937. That was 55. But this is still the origination date. You know what I'm saying? 1937. What's all the 37 that we want to touch on? Well, in connection with this, 
Let's touch on Ezekiel. Let's just put in Ezekiel right here. Ezekiel. Right? Ezekiel chapter 37. And chapter 37 is speaking about the valley of the dry bones. It's speaking about this lost sheep. It's speaking about black people. Right? Black people in the diaspora, the lost sheep, 2012. That is what Ezekiel Ezekiel chapter 37 is speaking on. So take a note of that and study that in connection with this number 37 and the prophecy concerning the lost sheep. The Rastafari prophecy also concerning the land. Now, Psalm 37 too. I want to give you another, another 37. Psalm 37. Remember, all is numbered. Psalm 37. Now, Psalm 37, I often like to call um, the land grant psalm. I call Psalm 37 the land grant psalm. And during our, um, our, our time of actively, openly serving the will of His Majesty in Christ, even through the appointment of the late Dr. Gladstone Robinson concerning the Federation and seeing the inside of, of, of what's what with the Ethiopian World Federation. And we, to, to make it a simple story, not violate any Section 11s of the organization, basically it comes uh, right to the beginning, right to the preamble, our divine heritage. Learn what that means and then act off of that positive knowledge. You know what I'm saying? If you understand that divine heritage is speaking about the covenant, you know what I'm saying? It's speaking about our birthright. It's speaking about our name, our nationality. Because when you go from preamble, it says we the black people. When you go to the, the articles, Article 1, Section 2A, it says Ethiopian. So what we gained in coming into this commonwealth, or in that time, this organization, you understand, was our nationality. You know what I'm saying? That means we were no longer Negroes, blacks, or coloreds. You know what I'm saying? We had reached the, 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 um, the, the family of nations. You know what I'm saying? The family of nations, like other folks uh, from this nation, country. So all we can say is that we were enslaved in America, and, and I got the same name as, as the white man that enslaved me and my people, and... and you, you understand that that particular, we're the only people that can say that. That's why when we look at the scriptures and the Israelites and what happened to the Israelites, you can't even see the Jews going through this part of the story, which is the, which is the, the true narration of the story. Mm -hmm. See, the converts to Judaism, the European Jews, you understand, know they don't fulfill this. You understand, know in faith and in the Jah is not partial. God is not a respect of persons. So if they do well, no doubt Jah will reward them. But our thing should not be about them. It should be about our covenant with him. You see, we spend a little bit too much time sometimes on, on them. Like when we say that we're African Zionists, people try to say, oh, why you say Zionist? Could we speak about Zion? You know what I'm saying? This is our scripture. Have you not read? of Zion, of Holy Mount Zion, of the African Zion, of the conquering line of the tribe of Judah. That, that's not our bad. That's on, on the bad of the person who is still in ignorance. But now there's World Wide Web, there's Internet, there's Google. They can learn these things for themselves, you understand, if they are so desirous. Now, let's go to Psalm 37 for a quick moment, right? Let's go to Psalm 37. Now, now biblical numbers... There's a meaning to numbers. Now, most people probably know the occultic meaning to things. They say, well, the Illuminati or the, the Freemasons, they use numbers like this, and, and that means that to them, so forth and so on. Okay, it's good to learn about that, but what do numbers mean to Jah? What, and therefore, what do these numbers mean to us who are in covenant and who preserve our birthright? You understand? What do these numbers mean? So, uh, Psalm 37. Now, Psalm 37, we call this the land-grant psalm. 
It says, Fret not thyself because of evil doers, neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity. Or as Rastafari will say, Altiquity. For well, really, that word would be rebellion. Who rebel against our divine heritage, who rebel against the Al Kidan, against our holy covenant. You understand? So they say they are of us, like many who are of Israel are not Israel. You know what I'm saying? Even as many who so-called Rastas are not truly Rastafari. It's not I and I that judge them. It's the Word. And it's their relationship in spirit and in truth with Jah's Word that, that proves whether, whether what they say is true or they may, may be like the, the, the leafy green fig tree that Christ saw on the road. And it was very beautiful looking you know what I'm saying? in appearance. And he went up to it. And, and it was fruitless, and he cursed it. You know what I'm saying? That was, a, that was a key to us. But hear this word, verse 2. For they shall be soon, they shall soon be cut down like the grass and wither as the green herb. Now, I recall presenting this psalm and teaching on this and, and reasoning with um, uh, our beloved elder um, when he was in this land of the living, Dr. Robinson, Gladstone Robinson, because he was telling me about all of the, all of the, um, the, the evil doing that, that some who had crept in to the land grant were doing and, and a lot of things that were going on that wasn't, what wasn't right about it. And this song came to my attention and we studied it, you know, and it was fret not yourself because of evil doers. Don't be envious of the workers of iniquity if others because of wrongdoing seem for a time to be prospering by that rebellion to what we know is truth and, and what we know is John's word and what John's law is. They will soon be cut down like grass and wither as the green herb. Verse 3 says to trust in Yah, to trust in Jah, to trust in Egeziabihir, the sustainer, and do good. Just like the Naya Bengi Harps, do good. Do good. Do good. Trust. Note that what key word trust. Now we have, have, have taught on and lectured on and tried to tutor on the fact that the word trust is connected with the matrix at a higher level of what the word belief. Belief is like blind faith. Then faith is like seeing and trust. Then you have words like confidence too. You understand? And because we lack those things, we lack that trust amongst ourselves because the house needs to be, the court needs to be called to order. And this is a call to order in the court, in our Father's house. Trust in Jah and do good. So shalt thou dwell in the land. So, because see, what was going on in this time is that a lot of things in the land was going wrong. And a lot of ones, even in the time of Dawit, great King David, wanted to leave the land, wanted to go elsewhere, because as the evildoers were proliferating, and we're living in a time where it seems like the evildoers of our own so-called people who are like color but not like kind are doing, it, it, it's frustrating to people. But the key thing is to trust in Jah and to do good. So shall thou dwell in the land, and verily thou shalt be fed. Delight thyself also in Jah, in Egziah, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. See, we delight ourselves in Jah, in the true and living God. That means we must delight ourselves in the Word. So when we're in that relationship, that covenant through Christ, which makes it righteous, then whatever we desire in our heart and spirit and in truth is according to the desire. See, some folks read this and figure they can just take that verse and, and work some magic on it. It doesn't work like that. You understand? And if, and if it does seem to work like that and it's not in accordance with his will, then it's not Jah who is blessing them because they are ignorant of what Jah's will is. That's why we must know him. You understand? Many will say, Lord, Lord, haven't we cast out demons? Haven't we done miraculous things in your name? And what did Adonai say? He said, I never knew you. Get away from me, you workers of iniquity. You workers of lawlessness. You're not in Torah. You're not grounded and founded on Torah and prophecy and Psalms of David. You understand? You are 
preaching a false gospel and blaspheming my name because if it's not based on his foundation then it's based on a gentile white western world misinterpretation now now look at the world and you can see this very clearly for those who say that they were informed by this or their their christianity or biblical christianity what has gone wrong or what never went right or truly righteous it says commit thy way to exiavi here Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. So, see, this, this word, is, it could say, have faith in him. It could have been translated like that. But the King James translators or, 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 or William Tyndall decided to translate it as trust so that one could grasp it. Don't say believe in him, but it says trust in him. But it comes from that same Amen, Mamen, Hebraic, Afro-Semitic root. And he shall bring forth thy righteousness as the light. Once again, Burhan from his majesty's word that the light which the scriptures contain. Bring forth thy righteousness as the light and thy judgment as the noonday. Rest. Shabbat Shalom. Senbet Salam. Rest in Egeziah. Rest in Yahweh Baruch Hu, blessed be he, and wait patiently for him. That means you're going about your business, but what you've prayed for in true faith, you understand, you are confident, you trust to receive it. So you're not anxietous, you're not agitated. You understand, you're waiting patiently, not for men and people, you're waiting patiently for him, to the one who you have committed your way to. Fret not thyself because of him who prospereth in his way. And see how easy it is for them to show us the rich people or these people who got rich by corruption or wicked means and people be like, oh, man, look what they did. And they start fretting themselves and they wonder why their health problems, you understand, come about. You understand, um, because of fretting. See, fretting and fear is the main reason how Israel, historical, biblical Israel, lost the promised land. And it's the very same reason why a generation for 40 years seems to have lost Shashemeni or our promised land, the land grant in this present time. It seems. Remember, it seems so. But fret not thyself because of him who prospereth in his way, because of the man who bringeth wicked devices to pass. Cease from anger and forsake wrath. Fret not thyself in any wise to do evil. See what happens? People get so anxious. Oh, I can't take it. I'm going crazy. And then they do something. And afterward, they're like, oh, why did I do this? So from so on. Because they did not hear or heed the word to fret not thyself in any wise. Well, if such and such happened, would you do such and such? Well, maybe then I would see the friend himself in that particular wise. But it says, fret not thyself in any wise to do evil. For evil doers, kufu woch, you understand, kufu um, adragi woch, they shall be cut off. They shall be cut off. They shall be karet. They shall be cut off. Right? But those who wait upon Yahweh, those who wait upon Egeziab Her, the sustainer, Jah, they shall inherit the earth. When I say the earth, the earth is the Lord's, but in particular is speaking of that which he promised to our ancestors, to our forefathers, even to our EWF forefathers, who are our ancestors. You understand? Know in this very same covenant with we we Ethiopians abroad, we Falashas of the West, we Ethiopian Hebrews, we elect Aras Tefari for yet a little while, and the wicked shall not be. I mean, you've seen what's going on in the world. I mean, you've seen these changes are happening so fast. You understand? Know, see what happened to Gaddafi. You understand? Know, see, see what's happened in the Middle East. You know, saying, Yea, thou shalt diligently consider his place, and it shall not be. You're going to look for these dudes and say, well, what will be these ones who are, who are speaking evil against the king of kings? Where them at now? Where them there? They are. You know, where them at? 
But the meek now, the humble, the meek, Inja, shall inherit. You know what inheritance are? And we are heirs, right, of God and co-heirs of Christ. The meek shall inherit the earth, the land, and shall delight themselves in the abundance of peace, in the abundance of salam, in the abundance of shalom. The wicked plot is against the just. You see, there's a lot of wicked that plot against the tzaddik, that plot against those who seek to be just. And how are we just? We are just because we are right with Abba. We are right with our Father in Yeshua, in Jesus Christos. You understand? Even in Christ, in his kingly character. But the, what they do, like the Illuminati plotted against his imperial majesty, the wicked plotted against the just and gnasheth upon him with his teeth. All the lies they have said about Kedus Abatachin. And Adonai shall laugh at him. So they say, well, you see Jesus wept, but look, Yeshua shall laugh at him, for he seeth that his day is coming, that the day for this Babylonian system, the day for these evildoers are coming. The wicked have drawn out the sword. See all this warfare going on? Even America sent it's true. They've drawn out the sword. You understand? In these so-called last days, they've drawn out the sword and have bent their bow to cast down the poor and needy. They have the monies to go to war and spend billions of dollars a day, but they can't fund some, some little um, um, inner city school programs or programs for, like, for like um, families and women and children. They don't have the money for those things. They're cutting all these programs, and they're sending billions of dollars because what it says, the wicked have drawn out the bow and have, bent, have drawn out the sword and have bent the bow to cast down the poor and needy. You see, we would think that they, they, they did that to cast them down in that sense. But in this sense, they're doing the same thing. They, they can't fund these programs. The children who can't afford it can't go to school. One time, one who one, one, were able to go to school for free. What happened to that? They still can do it, but they spend all this money, you understand, in war. You understand? That's how they cast down the poor and needy. And to slay such as be of upright conversation. And those who are righteous in their, in their not just the way they speak, it's not talking about just, it's talking about the akahe, the halaka. It's talking about how they behave in their lifestyle, you understand, in their way of living. You know, understand, it's like the whole thing if one say, well, listen, I'm not uh, about homosexual gay marriage because it's against my faith. They pile on those ones and try to demonize them. This is the same thing as saying right here. You know, since they want to slay such as be of an upright or righteous conversation, a righteous way of life, their sword shall enter into their own heart. So John is saying that all these evil words, all the swords that have come out, both metaphorical swords, whether it's the words or the physical guns and the bombs, are going to really, they're killing themselves. And their bows shall be broken. Many of the devices won't be able to work. You understand when, when Zion once again is established in this earth. A little that the righteous, right, a, a little that the righteous man has, is better than the riches of many wicked. You know how many times I had to I had to commit that verse to memory because I think mean, back in the day these lifestyles of the rich and famous and everything was a bling bling everywhere. But I was like get rich or die trying kind of stuff. And you like oh it's a quicksand. And, and caught on this verse, a little that the right that a righteous man hath is better than the riches of many wicked. And, and it's just so amazing in the, in the days when. When some of us as Rastafari used to sup together and each one would bring over some water or some food or some fruits or whatever. And it was just a little bit, a little bit of herb. But that little bit in righteousness, it was, it was better than going to one of these kind of feasts, you understand, with the wicked. You know, so that's also further proofs of this word in our own experience. For the arms of the wicked shall be broken. But the Lord, but Jah, upholdeth the righteous. They don't know how it happens. It's like almost like somebody has said, I think it was uh, Brother Dawood. He was saying, you know, it's when these storms always happen. The storms always seem to always hit certain people and seems to, seems to most times skip over the poor and needy. 
you understand, and go out to the rich and greedy, and you just wonder about that. That's like this verse right here, that Jah upholdeth the righteous. Jah knoweth the days of the upright, and their inheritance shall be forever. See, that our true inheritance is not just limited to a couple of years or something like that. Only because we're in this particular, this world system, but this world system of hell, death, and destruction is wrapping up. You understand? And I and I is getting ready for the eternal. They shall not be ashamed in the evil time. So that means there's an evil time coming, but the ones who should be fearing that evil time are the evil doers, not I and I. According to this word, they shall not be ashamed. And when we see they shall not be ashamed, now we have to receive it. So instead of saying they shall not, we shall not be ashamed in the evil time. And in the days of famine, we shall be satisfied. So if a famine is coming to America, and it's about time, but if famine is coming to America, I and I will eat, according to Jah. You understand? Just know that. You understand? But the wicked shall perish. Because when a wicked man find out that he don't have all that blood money after he killed and did so much wickedness, these people go crazy. They'll kill themselves. You understand? Because they've already sold their souls. So it's just killing the flesh. But the wicked shall perish, and the enemies of Yahweh shall be as the fat of lambs. It's going to be like a tabernacle sacrifice. They shall consume. Into smoke, they shall consume away. They shall burn up. You understand? Know the wicked borroweth and payeth not again. But the righteous showeth mercy and giveth. You know, they, you know how they really borrowed from us? They stole the Bible. They call themselves Jews and Christians and call us niggas without no culture. And deny. They, so they, they borrow, but they never gave it back. You know, it's like they took Yeshua HaMoshiach's image, they whitewashed it, and now we have the evidence, and still they won't say, well, yeah, we did that, and he really is black. So, like, they borrowed it, but they, they don't want to pay. But the paid master is coming to, to, you know, to give them the check. Mm -hmm. Not the check. The paid master is coming to checkmate them, to checkmate them. Mm -hmm. So they're going to consume. They're going to burn up. But the righteous showeth mercy and giveth. But even still, I and I is giving. You understand? And not because we're so generous, but because Jah is so good. You understand? Jah is so good. For such as be blessed of him shall inherit the earth. Those who are blessed of who? Of him. You see, they want to bless themselves, but it don't work like that. Those who are blessed of Jah. Those who are blessed of Yah, they will inherit the land. They will inherit the earth. So you hear a lot of folks talking about, oh, the Illuminati is trying to control the world, and they're trying to eat up the land. And that's exactly what they're doing. They're trying to do these things. But all those things will fail. But you see, here's the trick. If they can make you believe it, you understand? It's not really what's happening, but you will believe it's what is happening and you will lose your part because you have had faith and trust in them and not in Jah. So you hear them saying what they're doing. So when you hear them saying that, you got to check this psalm, Psalm 37. For such as be blessed of him shall inherit the earth, and they that be cursed of him shall be cut off. They're going to be cut off. You know, the steps of a good man are ordered by Yahweh, and he delighteth in his way. Mm. The steps of a good man, according to John's standard, not man's standard, but of a good man, are ordered. So there's a, there's a sense of order. Remember the first, the first of the seven seals is concerning order. Mm -hmm. We say order in the court, right? Order in our Father's court. In the tabernacle, we learn of the courtyard. Order in the court. We say, how come we can't unite? How come we're not united? How come the movement not? Because there's no order in the court. John's order must be reestablished in our heads and our hearts. You know what I'm saying? The real court and the inner court. The steps of a good man or of man are ordered by Yahweh, and he delighteth in his way. Because Yeshua HaMashiach, our black Lord and Savior, is the way, the truth, and the life. Though he fall, 
he shall not be utterly cast down. For Yahweh upholdeth him with his hand. This is beautiful here. Because we all know that we have fallen or we have failed somewhere along the line. Now, who do we have faith in? The people who say that it's all over for you and you lost out on some material worldly thing or some material worldly condition or Jah's word. Which word really resonates in your head and your heart as truth? And if Jah's word doesn't resonate in your head and your heart and you want it to, then pray to him. Then pray to Abba in the name of Yeshua and ask him for that and just explain to him exactly what's going on and you want this this truth of his. You want to know the truth. You want to be free of this of this demonic, this world system, this evil, this evil world system that goes so far be, beyond just the white man. It is ridiculous if, if you really want to get to the root. We have the parables of the scripture. And, you know, if we can't recognize the meaning of that, you know, then how can we recognize, you know, the fuller reality you know, saying, of this, this spiritual universe that we are in. I mean, we're so far down here on this vibration, this material vi vibration. It's only as you start to, to, to rise with Christ and the Christ consciousness that like the veil opens up and you start seeing real things that were there and you're wondering, how come I didn't see it? Just say hallelujah, give thanks and praise. But though he fall, and though we may fall, we shall not be utterly cast down. Why? Because Jah, he upholds I and I with his hand, even his right hand. He holds our hand. I have been young, and now am old. I remember I was saying this when I was so-called younger. So I've been young, and now I'm older. Yet I have not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed breaking bread. But some would say, when them yadin. I hear what you're saying, but I've seen some ones who were righteous, man, and it seemed like they were, were they really righteous, or did you believe, were they righteous according to, to, to Yeshua? Were they righteous according to the Metzav Kedus, according to the Word, or were they righteous in your eyes because you were ignorant of, of Jah's standard? You know what I'm saying? It's his standard. You know what I'm saying? He's not, Jah's not obligated to anything except his Word. you got to recognize that. And accept his word in faith, in spirit, and in truth. You understand? Um, so, the righteous are not forsaken. And his seed, remember seed. Seed can be interpreted race. But in, 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 the, in the metaphysical sense, that spiritual seed of I and I being of that new race, of the new day. You understand? The, the true resurrected humanity. You understand? He is ever merciful and lendeth, and his seed is blessed. Depart from evil. That means you have to make that decision. Depart from evil and do good and dwell forevermore. You can't be on the fence. If you stay on the fence, you're going to be split as a hypocrite. You understand? Depart from evil and do good and dwell. That means and live forevermore. For Yahweh, the eternal one, the living one, loveth judgment. He loveth. You, know, you hear some folks saying, man, you talk about too much judgment, man, just peace and love. John says he loved judgment. I mean, I mean, if, if you have been wronged, right, if you were wronged, right, wouldn't you want justice? Wouldn't you want judgment for your situation? And who would not want judgment for a situation when somebody's wrong? Usually probably the unrepentant wrongdoer wouldn't want judge because they know that's judgment on them. So you have to question that why some folks will say they're of Jah and 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 yet they will shy away from judgment. You should you know, they should just repent. You know, repent. Get that all worked out with Jah before it's too late. But it says Jah loveth judgment and forsaketh not his saints, his Kedusan, his holy ones. They are preserved forever. Forever, brothers and sisters, forever. But the seed of the wicked shall be cut off. So here is, is really speaking of those two seeds that we find in Genesis. The seed of the serpent versus the seed of the woman. You, you remember that? I mean, I mean, that might be a metaphor. That might be a parable. Some may say that might be a myth or a relic of mythology. But the truth in that, 
it resonates and, and that and, and it's and it's pure Hebraic simplicity, it still resonates if you can receive the truth. If you're not forever learning but never able to come to acknowledgement. You know, someone can be reading but they don't really understand what they're reading because they're not seeing how it's manifesting in the real world. And so they're getting the instructions to overcome, but because they're blind, they're still in blind faith, they haven't come to a level of seeing faith or of studying and finding the truth for themselves and meditating and praying. You understand? And coming to that 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 that, that groundation, right? So the righteous shall inherit the land. Right? The righteous shall inherit the land. Recognize this is the land and the land grant in Ethiopia and our promised land. It says the righteous. So the the question should be and the study for any who are desirous is what is righteousness, not according to what I think it is or what somebody else told me it is, but according to his standard. You understand? According to his standard, according to what the scriptures say, according to the word. That's what matters. You understand? The righteous, so one can know who are the Tzadikan. The Tzadikan or the Zadokim shall inherit the land and dwell therein forever. We're speaking about the millennial time, the forever time, the what a seat time. You understand? We're speaking about that right here. It says that the mouth of the righteous speaketh what wisdom? Speak of Hokma. The mouth of the righteous speaketh wisdom. So that's, it's giving a key indications into what is righteous, who is righteous, how to tell what fruit. So that wisdom is like a fruit of the mouth of the righteous and his tongue and his tongue, his 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 we could say his language, we could interpret that. His language it speaketh it talketh, it talketh of judgment. Now, in the real world, as one would say, we only find that his imperial majesty Kedamawi Hala Salase as a true statesman or a so called not a world leader, but a leader in the world, a true leader in the world was one who spoke of judgment. Until the philosophy, you remember that? Until the war speech. That's just a good, ready example. Verse 31, the law of his God, of his God. People say there's just one God. If there's one God, why is his God? You see, there's a lot of things people call God. You understand? Know but the true ones take possession of that. It says the law of his God, the Torah of his God, is in his heart. Remember we talked on the heart, I mean, hearing, we talked on reading, studying, memorizing, and then we talked on meditating, and then memorizing means, so when you say learn it by heart, if you learn something by heart, you memorize it. So it says the law of his God is in his heart, none of his steps shall slide. So it's telling us as we get stronger in faith, you know, within our footing becomes firm even at the higher heights. Even at the higher heights, remember the disciples, they wasn't able to cast out some of the demoniacs, some of these spirits, some of these demons, some of these spells. And they came to Christ. Christ did it. Yeshua did it. The Moshiach did it. And he said, well, how come you did it and we couldn't do it? He said, oh, ye of what little faith? You're still acting like believers or blind believers and haven't come to the, 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 the faith level. You know what I'm saying? You're still on the belief level which is good for a novice or a beginner, but you're not growing up to him in all things. Therefore, you're not taking responsibility as his sons and his daughters in the real kingdom. You understand that? That means in this real world, the kingdom is here, but people don't want to see it. You understand? And that's why they use the media and other things to keep your mind focused on, 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 on their make-believe, you know, because they're making you believe what they want you to believe. That's what you have to study and show yourself approved. So the law of his God, the Torah of his God is in his heart, and none of his steps shall slide. The wicked watcheth the righteous. Don't they watch? You understand? The wicked watcheth the righteous. Right? And this is not a show that Jah overstands. And seeketh to slay him. But Jah, Yahweh, will not leave him in his hand. See, when we commit ourselves to John, he's not going to leave us in the wicked hand, right? He will not leave us in his hand, nor condemn him when he is judged. 
That's why we don't fear judgment because you can be condemned or you can be acquitted. In Jah and through Yeshua, we are acquitted. Yo's ends, that's why it says depart, quit it. You know, quit those evils, quit it. You know what I'm saying? So that we will be confident in our acquittal. So we don't fear the so called judgment. Because he says it right here. He says that Jah will not leave him in his hand nor condemn him when he is judged. Wait on Yahweh and keep his way, protect his way. And, and I used to wonder why it says to keep his way. Then it says he's the way, the truth, and the life. Why is it to keep his way? Because we have to keep, we have to protect it because um, the other uh, the, the spirits and men and people and ones who are in the counterfeit and artificial mind or the worldly mind are going to try to distract you, try to move you over here, move you a little bit out the way over here. You say, well, I keep the Sabbath. I keep the, so they're going to try to do things on the Sabbath to try to eat you over this, but still be patient. You understand? And commit yourself to John and, and pray to him and speak to him and study his word and fellowship with others who do likewise. Wait on Yahweh and keep his way. Protect his way so, so you won't be led astray. And he shall exalt thee to inherit the land. When the wicked are cut off, thou shalt see it. Thou shalt see it. The eye comes in again, right? I have seen the wicked. I have seen the wicked in great power. Now, and this is in, in, in Dawit's time, if he's talking about the wicked that he saw in his time, well, yeah, he saw many of the wicked in great power. Now, prophetically, he is speaking to us. So when we see the wicked, we see the wicked in this world system. It's like they, they seem to have everything under their diabolical control. That's what Dawit is saying. I've seen the wicked in great power and spreading himself like a green bay tree. Wow. Yet he passed away. And lo, look, look and see, he was not. He's no more. Yea, I sought him. You can go look for him, but he could not be found. He can't be found. Mark the perfect man. I remember the old time Rastafari, Rasta man say, this is his majesty. This is Kedamawi Haile Selassie. This is him right here. It says, Mark the perfect man. Mark the perfect man. And behold the upright, for the end of that man is peace. The end of the fulfillment of that man is salam. But it says that the transgressors, you know, those who want to transgress John law, shall be destroyed together. So when they say we all need to get together, you have to first of all assess what are what am I getting together with? Are these righteous people who uphold John's way? I'm getting together with, or are these all kind of motley crew of, of, of rebels and wicked people? Because if it, if it is, notice what it says, the transgressors shall be destroyed together. Together. The end of the wicked shall be cut off. The end. You know, we're in the end days. And it seems like that they think it's going to go like this, but Jah is showing us through his word and through things we're seeing in the, in, in the seclora that he is going to cut them off. So we have to be prepared, you know what I'm saying? We have to be grounded and founded on that rock. But the salvation, now that word salvation, when you read it, you have to think of Yeshua, Yehoshua, Yeshua. His name means that Jah saves. Yeshua, Yesus' name means that Jah saves. So Jah's saving is his salvation. But the salvation of the righteous is of the Lord. The salvation of the righteous is of Abba. Of Abba Kedus, Kedus Abatachin. It's of the Gizyavihir. It is of the King of Kings. The salvation of the righteous is of Yahweh, is of Jah. He is their strength. He is our, I and I strength. You understand? Our power, our Hail in the time of trouble. So if there's trouble, we shouldn't try to bring it on. But if it comes on, so be it. Jah has already given us. You know what I'm saying? He's already given us that, 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 that strength, that word, you know what I'm saying, that rhema word. He is our strength in the time of trouble, even Jacob's trouble, even this trouble for the lost sheep. You know, because there's that tribulation we have to go through. But what does it say in Revelation? These are they who wash their garments in the blood of the Lamb, in the blood of Yeshua, in the life of Yeshua. 
You understand? And these are the overcomers. You understand? So I and I seek to be be worthy to stand before the Son of Man. You you was and Yahweh shall help them. He shall help I and I and deliver I and I. He shall deliver them from the wicked. Now this word deliver could also be save, in the sense that it could have been translated as save because it comes from the same root as Yeshua. So it says that Yahweh shall help them and deliver them and Yeshua them. And he shall deliver them, he shall Yeshua them from the wicked and save them. Now they put the word save and Yeshua them because they trust. Because they trust in him. Overstand that how that's the 40th verse. Now, now you have to remember that 40 is a number of trial. Now, this brings us forward to this right here again, the number 37. You understand? And we still have not gotten into um, um, the verse or, or the portion of this sabbatical reading and feeding. Because we want to connect this firmly with 1937. EWF, the land grant Shashimani, what we have experienced for the 40 years like these Israelites right here. Ezekiel 37, the valley of the dry bones, the skull and bones, the, the hip-hop Egypt, what, the, what, what this generation is going through right now. Psalm 37, which we just went through in the fullness of it, and we recognize that the key word right there is trust. You see what I'm saying? But what we're going to learn about in this sabbatical reading and feeding, shalach lika, or lak til kalachu, what we're going to learn in this particular portion here that's very interesting, we're going to learn that the Beit Israel committed a breach of trust. And then when we study the history of the Federation, too, over the past 40 years, there was also a breach of trust. Now, the connection, of course, with I and I is the repair of the breach, the restore of the ways to dwell in. But the key word right here, operative word, is trust. It begins off saying, don't fret. Don't fret yourself because of evildoers. Don't be envious against those who work iniquity or lawlessness because they're going to be cut off like grass. You know what I'm saying? And wither as green herb. It says, trust in Yahweh. Trust. That's like saying, have faith in Him. You know what I'm saying? Have faith. The word faith, trust, and even belief. But belief is a lower level of it. Belief is like, kind of like kindergarten on level. It's the blind faith part. You've heard something, but you haven't studied it. You don't really know it. You haven't really weighed it. You haven't really got the facts and done the math for yourself. Now, when you come to a level of getting the facts for yourself and doing the math, then you come to that scholar's level, the truly disciple level, decamesmore level. When you come to that particular level that you are looking for the evidence and studying it for yourself and seeking to headrest with Jah and find the truth for yourself and also fellowship with others as Jah gives the opportunity. You understand? But in Jah, and in Joshua, you're never alone. You understand? Because you have to understand the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So you have to also get off that state of, I have to find just a group of people who in appearance may look Rastafari and righteous. You have to first of all find out, well, what is really righteous? So when you go out there and the Word says to try every spirit, you, understand? you will know what you're trying and what you're looking for. You understand? It's like some people ask questions in, in lectures. And we heard one teacher say is that the reason why you don't get the answer, that real answer you, 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 you want, is you don't even know the question to ask. You know what I mean? Like some people will say, uh, is there a God? And the person say yes. Instead of saying, well, um, what is God like? Or how can we know him? You know what I'm saying? So when you start to know more, you know what I'm saying, then you can't even seek better, you know what I'm saying, of what you're looking for. You know what I'm saying? And as you start to be honest and truthful before Jah and before man, then you can't even bring out of yourself what you're really looking for. Because sometimes people will hide things to themselves. But see, in coming into that prayer house is really when we, we're cleansing. You know what I'm saying? We're cleansing all of that because that's part of the new birth. You know what I'm saying? Not partial birth. Partial birth is beginning off to follow him and then somehow going astray. 
You understand? You are in process of being born. You understand? But somehow you have gone off of the beaten track. You understand? Wandered off of the track. Was distra distracted off of the track. You understand? But where there's life, there's hope. And there's through repentance, through prayer, my brothers and sisters. Now, lock till kalachu. I already pointed out how lock and lika, you can see that similarity right there as well. And now 37, let's deal with the number, let's deal with the number 37. I took a couple of notes right here. First of all, the number 37, you know what number 37 in Bible, in Bible mathematics, what's the number 37 in Bible mathematics? In Bible mathematics, the number 37 is the oracle of God, right, is the oracle of God. So when we speak about the number 37, Let's do this right here. 37, right, the number 37, it equals, right, the oracles. Oracles mean words, the words of God, the words, and we put it, the words of John, right? It's 3 plus 7, right? 3 plus 7 equals 10, but really when you break it down to single digits, it equals 1. So we need to look at the three biblically, the seven biblically, the 